Hello and welcome to the Flask Crash Course. First of all, let's see what is Flask. Flask is a micro framework that offers basic features of a web app. And the word micro in micro framework means that Flask aims to keep the core simple but extensible, which means you can start your application small, but you can scale it up as you move forward. So Flask is not opinionated like Django. Django gives you, for example, a lot of out of the box tools like the admin site, like the database setup. You don't have this in Flask. You need to do everything manually. And Flask is based on the works with WSGI toolkit and Jinja2 template engine. And for those who work with frameworks for the first time, um, let me tell you what is a framework. You can think of it as a big library that gives you a lot of tools, like a lot of functions and classes and modules, so you won't be bothered about the low level details. WSGI stands for Web Server Gateway Interface. It's an interface, basically, that connects your web server with your application. Django uses ASCII, which is a synchronous server gateway interface. It's the successor of WSGI. And WSGI uses a toolkit called WorkSwig. And WorkSwig is a German word. Work means work in English. Zwig means stuff. So work stuff essentially means a tool. It's a toolkit uh, that's used by WSGI in order to implement requests, response objects, and so on. The third thing that you'll need to be aware of is the Jinja template language. So it's a template language that is used inside your HTML template. So you can plug in those two curly braces, um, variables, conditions, for loops, and every Python syntax. Basically, you can use it inside those two curly braces. And also we use the, um, the percent sign as well. So let's summarize Flask. It's a lightweight WSGI web application framework or micro framework. It's designed to make getting started quick and easy. In fact, it began as a simple wrapper around WorksWig and Jinja and has become one of the most popular Python web application frameworks. So who uses Flask in real life? A lot of big companies such as Netflix, Airbnb, Patreon, Pinterest, Trivago, Reddit, Uber, and Mozilla Firefox. So if these big companies use Flask, why don't you use it, right? So enough with the slides and let's go ahead and install Flask. All right, go ahead and open your terminal or your command prompt and pip install Flask with a capital F. Okay, so um, with this out of the way, let's close our uh, command prompt. And let me walk you through the plan. So I have eight folders, and in each folder I will create app.py. Okay, this is what I'm going to do in this course. Um, the setup, the routing, uh, rendering HTML, the variables and Jinja, static files, how to render CSS, JavaScript, and image files, um, the HTTP methods, uh, you will need to be aware of um, the status codes and HTTP um, methods in general. Okay, but I will go through them uh, very quickly. Form data will create a form data, and I will touch on cookies very briefly. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to import from the Flask module the Flask class. And what I want to do next is I want to create an instance of this Flask class. I will call it app. And this will be equal to the Flask class. And I need to pass an argument called underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. All right. And this is the name of the application's module. So this is needed so that Flask knows where to look for templates, static files, and so on. Next, I want to use what we will call the route decorator. And this starts by at sign app dot route and in parentheses in single quotes, just a slash. And this is very analogistic to Django's path when we would set up in the URL patterns, we would set up the path, right? You use the path keyword and in parentheses, we have um, empty strings. This is very analogistic to that. What comes after the decorator is the function. Always what comes after a decorator is a function. And our function is called index. And what it does, it returns a simple hello world. This is simply a basic setup for um, a very minimal application in Flask. And actually, there are two ways that we can use in order to run a Flask application. The first way to run your file by setting in your integrated terminal Flask app, let me just make it smaller, Flask app equal to whatever the name of your file, then you can run the command Flask run. 
Also, you can work in the debug mode or the development mode um, by using the keyword set flask app equal to development. And this is for Windows users. If you're a Mac or Linux user, you need to uh, substitute the word set by the word export. So let me put it here. Export is used for Mac Linux users. All right. Um, this is the first way. The second way and is my preferred way actually is just typing if name equal to main go ahead and run the app and this is the instance that we have created up and this is enough for you to run your application so let's try that out you need to be inside your directory so cd flask one setup and you will run it as you run any uh, other python file so python app.py Okay, you can see here that the environment is the production, debug mode is off, and it's running on the local host on port 5000, as opposed to Django's um, port, which was 8000. Okay, so let's click on that. And we have our hello world message. Okay, you can put h1 tags even, uh, h1, and close the h1 tag to give it bolder and bigger font. But Notice when I will make refresh, nothing happened. And that's because the debug mode is set to off. So let's get back to our terminal. Okay. And I have, we have the server is still running. So let's exit the server, control C. And what we'll do now is we will set the debug mode equal to true. Okay, save. Let's run the server once again. And we have the debug mode is on. Now, when I will make refresh, immediately the change is applied. The routing is very simple. You saw when you open the local host on port 5000, we got hello world on the page. And this is because the index function is getting invoked after the app route. Okay. So if I want to change the route, I can actually copy these lines. And after the slash, let's say hello. And I will copy that again. And here, instead of hello, let's say goodbye, for example. Okay. So say just hello and simple goodbye. All right. And the most important thing is to change the names of the functions because we cannot have redundant functions names. So let's try that out. All right. So notice here 5000 is the same as 5000 with slash. It does the same thing. It returns hello world. But if you will make slash and type hello, you get hello. And the same goodbye, you get goodbye. All right. So this is routing simply. The next thing that I would like to show you is how to render an HTML template because up until now, we didn't render HTML templates. All what we did is we displayed a simple message on an HTML page, but it's not an actual HTML. So let's go ahead and create app.py. So we have basically the same thing. We have index and now we are going to get introduced to a new method called render template and the render template comes with the flask module. So what the render template does, it basically renders index.html. It's very similar to Django. And I left uh, slash 2021 with just a simple message, Happy New Year 2021, to show you the difference between both, uh, between both pages, I mean. All right, so we need an index.html. And what we would do is, we will create a folder, we will call it templates, and this is by convention. And inside templates, I want to create index.html. Let's create a simple boilerplate. Let's here write HTML page. And in the body, I want to say hello from HTML. Let's go to app.py and let's run the file. And be careful, I'm inside flask3 underscore HTML. You need to make sure that you're inside your current directory. And let's run um, Python app.py. And let's open the browser. Okay. 
you see here hello from HTML and if you will go to your web dev tools if you're on Google Chrome you hit F12 you will find that um, in the elements you'll find that it's a full um, HTML page with doc type uh, language settings um, the metadata a title a body and so on all right as opposed to uh, if we will um, where is it uh, happy new year if we'll go to the route 2021 you will find happy new year but if you will check out the page you won't find any doc type or language settings all right it's not an HTML page okay so this is the main difference and if you know Django rendering the HTML page would be very easy to you it's very similar okay so this was how to render HTML page in flask welcome back so the next thing that I want to show you is the variables and how we can use variables and plug them in the HTML using the Jinja template language so let me actually um, create a file app.py and we're going also to need templates so create a folder called templates and index.html and notice that in the previous example when we have rendered um, the HTML page for the first time we didn't use um, load static we um, in Django use this line load static here we don't need that because Flask knows exactly where to look for and let's here say for instance hello the same as in the previous example and what I want to do is very similar to what I did in the last example so let's take the code from here and we'll paste it okay so we're going to render index.html and we will leave the happy new year message as it is it turns out that render template can deal with variables if I want instead of hello I want to say hello followed by your name for example how we can do that well it's very easy we need a route to your name so in the browser when you will type your name you will get the message hello followed by your name so let's have a placeholder here we can say name and uh, also in the index I want to set a parameter of name and here we will set the name to the actual name itself so this blue pertains to the parameter uh, which are going to pass in the index function and this name right here pertains to whatever name will be plugged after the hello message so the syntax for that is we'll open double curly braces and in the middle we will have name just we need to have spaces like that and I know it's a little bit confusing but um, when you were repeated many times you will get the hang of it so name is the name passed and this name here attribute um, is this one right here okay so if you will change name here you will need to change name here okay enough said let's go ahead and run our file so Python app.py and let's open the browser okay so immediately we got um, an error message 404 page not found and the reason for that is because we have an empty route we have either name or 2021 okay um, there are a couple of ways to deal with this you can have an if statement so if empty route just we can um, display message saying that this page is empty else we can um, run the other function which is index the second way is to ignore that totally and go ahead to your name so let's say your name is James you hit enter you get hello James right Python understood that the name is the name that you have passed uh, let's change names let's say Sarah hello Sarah get um, back hello back okay 
and the other uh, message is still working 2021 happy new year so this was how to use variables and Jinja in Flask welcome back the next topic on the list is how to render CSS image and JavaScript files in your HTML template and again I'm going continuously to compare between Django and Flask and I have a Django course uh, divided into six sections and two projects actually in a playlist and I will leave the link for this in the description alright so let's actually close folder number four and we're going to work with this code here and it's very similar to what we had in the fourth folder we have uh, one route and a function called redirect and it returns enter followed by a name in URL to redirect and this is instead of the 404 um, error message that we got last time so what you will need to do is you will enter your name and you will get hello and followed by your name so this is very similar but what we're actually interested in is how to render images and CSS files so let's go ahead actually and create templates again okay and index okay and here we'll say hello followed by your name and let's say that I want to display an image after hello name so usually what you would do in normal HTML you have an image tag with a source and this source is the actual source where uh, your files live so similarly to that what we would do is we will use Jinja again so double curly braces and we have a method called URL underscore four so we'll open parentheses static in single quotes comma and we need the file name and the file name is going to uh, point to the folder first so we will create a folder called images and I will have my channels logo so bec.png and it's much more complicated in Django you need to go to settings in Django make some configuration steps then uh, go to URLs and so on but the common thing between Django and Flask is we're going to create the same type of folder so let's actually create a folder called static and inside static I will have another folder I will call it images and let's create in the same time a folder called CSS and you can do the same with JavaScript as well if you like okay and in images I'm going to actually grab the logo I will put it here all right and let's give it some styling because it's big so style um, let's give it a width of 70 pixels all right and that's it and we need to be inside our current directory so so cd flask uh, 5 underscore static underscore files and let's run the server okay so um, in the main page we have this message enter followed by a name in your to redirect and if we will have slash and say back we get hello back and the image let's actually have a breaking line save that and let's refresh and get it down all right let's also try with the CSS so let's have a CSS file call it style.css and it's very similar to the image configuration okay so let's have a link and the horizontal reference is going to be let me actually grab this one copy and we'll paste it here CSS and the file is called style.css and let's have some general settings for the page so uh, I will have margin of zero have padding of zero I have box sizing um, border box that's okay I'll have a font family sans serif and let's have a background let's make it black and the font color let's make it triple F okay 
let's go ahead and check out our page. Let's refresh and boom, we have everything changed immediately. So this is how to render images, CSS files in your HTML template in Flask. Welcome back. The next topic that I want to discuss is the HTTP methods. And let me tell you that HTTP protocol is the foundation of data communication in World Wide Web now. And different methods of data retrieval from specified URL are defined in this HTTP protocol. And we have different methods. You might be aware of the POST and GET methods because they are the most common. So the GET method is used to request data from a specified source. All right. The POST method sends data to a server to create or update a resource. So let me actually POST, GET, Okay, we have also head and the head method is the same exactly as the get method. The main difference is it doesn't have a response body. All right. So let's say, for instance, um, if we will say get followed by users. So this returns just the list of users. But if you will do the same thing with head, so if you'll say head users, this will make the same request, but will not return the list of users. We also have other methods like, uh, for instance, put and delete. And if you'll go to your web browser, type HTTP methods, you will find a lot of information about that. So you get the get request, the head request, the post, the put, delete, you have connect, options, trace, patch, but we don't use half of this. So for you, the most important thing as a beginner is to understand get and post requests. You're going to deal with those uh, very often. Let's get back to our code. So there's something worth mentioning here is that by default, the Flask route responds to the get requests. So if you will not uh, in methods here, for instance, if you will not specify any methods, if you'll make it like that, the default request is going to be get request. However, this preference can be changed by providing methods argument like we did here, right, in the app decorator. So let's discover the code a little bit. So from Flask, we have imported Flask class, and this we have seen it many times in the previous examples. Redirect, the redirect method returns a response object and redirects the user to another target location or to another route. Okay, URL4 is useful for dynamically building a URL for a specific function. And the request method keeps track of the request level data. So these are the class and the functions or the methods that we have imported from the Flask module. Then we have two routes. One route is a success route and the other one is the login. Actually, what would make more sense is uh, when we will put this above here because presumably you're not logged in. And if the request dot method is equal to post, in this case, I want to declare a variable called user and I will have a form with the name and I will show you in the HTML exactly what I mean. So let's actually have that real quick. So let's have templates folder index dot HTML and inside the index dot HTML, let's have a boilerplate. Let's have a title login form in the body, I want to have a form and the action is going to be the login URL. So let's type HTTP colon slash slash and the local host port 5000 slash login. And this makes sense because um, the login route is corresponding to the route in the app dot route here in this decorator and inside the form. What I want is three paragraphs, actually. Let me push this below a little bit. And I want a simple message saying enter name and two other paragraphs, one with input for the name and the other one with the type of submit. So this is a normal text with a name and I will pass NM corresponding to NM right here because this is going to redirect the page to success once you enter your name, right? And the second one, I wanted a submit button. So submit with a value of submit. 
this is basically it. So if request method equal to post, I want to have the success message, which is going to be redirected to this route, success slash name. Else, which means that the name is already registered, I want to also get it from the args and display the same message. So the second route is success slash name, and I have another function called success with the name parameter, and we return welcome name, all right? And this is just simple uh, string placeholder. This is old format. Um, we can comment it, and let me write it in a modern way. So return, let's say, welcome, um, before I need the F string. And in curly braces, I will pass the name. And it will do the same thing. This is just old format with the percent %s for a string placeholder. All right, and that's it. This is all what this application does. Let's actually check it out. A terminal, okay, and python app.py. Okay, let's open the browser. So let's actually All right, so let's run the server uh, app.py. Okay, the server now is running, and as I'm using Visual Studio Code, I'm using a tool called um, Live Server. You can install it uh, very easily. So I will open this HTML page with Live Server. So this is my login form. If you will type, let's say, um, Joe, submit we got a message, welcome Joe. This is just simply to show you the different methods, the get method and the post method, and how the redirect method works um, in this very simple login form. So this was HTTP methods in Flask briefly explained. Welcome back. So we have already seen that the HTTP method can be specified in a URL. In this section, I will show you the form data. So we will have key value pairs. Um, let me actually create real quick templates folder. And in templates folder, I will have two files. One, I will call it employee.html. Also, I want report.html. Okay, we will have now two HTML files. So we will import the Flask class, the render template, and the request. In case of an empty route, I want to trigger a function called employee, which will return a render template, the employee.html. Okay, so no, let's go ahead and create our employee.html. We'll have a boilerplate. We'll call um, in the title employee data form. Then in the body, I want a simple form. So the form will go to the local host, http colon slash slash local host column 5000 slash report and don't forget the method is post method and I want four or five paragraphs so let's say um, I want a name with input and okay it's a text and it has a name of name and let's repeat that um, three times. So I need also age, I need nationality, and um, let's say joining date, for instance. And don't forget the submit button. So we want a submit um, input tag um, type submit instead of text and instead of name it's a value of submit and we are done with our form so let's go to report.html let's close this one and let's create another html and here we'll say report or employee report rather so in the body i want a table Let's give it a border of one. And I want inside that report to loop over each key value pair. So let's have for loop and a percent sign, percent sign, also give it two spaces. Then we'll say for key and value in report dot items. 
So each key value pair in the report items, I want to display them or return them. So let's have table raw and inside it will have um, th and td. And this will represent the key. And here is the value. And don't forget to end the for loop by end for. So, okay, and we are done with our report. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the server. So, let's actually uh, get out the Flask 6 and enter Flask 7. And we'll say python app.py. All right, let's open the browser. And we have our form that we have created, a very simple form. So let's say Eva in name, um, give it 30 years old, nationality, um, Polish, joining date 12-12-2001, submit, and we get our report, okay? Report, name Eva, age 30, nationality, Polish, joining date, everything that we have written is well um, placed in the table that we've created in the report.html all right and we have plugged as you have seen the key value in each report item okay so this was how to create a data form in flask so the last thing on the menu today is cookies and http cookies or internet cookies are built specifically for internet web browser to track and personalize and save information actually about your session. Okay, so cookies are stored on your computer in the form of a text file. And the purpose of that is remembering and tracking data that pertains to your usage. And this is mainly for better visitor experience and site statistics, which is part of data collection. It actually it's something that I'm morally against, but that's another topic for discussion. I have here my code uh, just for the sake of time, I've copied it. And we have our um, the Flask class and the different methods, right? Then I have three routes. I have the default route, which goes to index.html. I have a route called setCookie and another route called getCookie, okay? So setCookie has two methods, post and get. Following that, the setCookie function, and if request.method is equal to post, I want to have a name in the form that I'm going to create in a second. So make response method is going to render template this HTML page that I'm also going to create. Also, I want to set cookie, and this set cookie method has a um, key value pair as well. It's in the form of a dictionary. So user ID being the key and the actual user being the value. Then we will return the response. So this is the set cookie uh, is doing actually. Also for the get cookie, we want to get it and print it or display it on the HTML page. We want the name and we are getting the user ID from the cookies itself because this um, actually accesses this dictionary or this um, repository, if you will, and returns a simple message, welcome, and it will return the name that is being passed here. This is your cookie. And I will show you also in the web dev tools uh, how things work, right? So, but um, yeah, let's go ahead and create templates folder. Then I want um, read cookie dot um, html index.html okay so let's start by index it's um, very simple to do so let's say here um, default route and in the body i want a form and this goes to set cookie page so let's take a look here we have the set cookie route all right um, yeah, but after that, I want also the post method because if I will not um, define or I will not specify, the method is going to be get. Okay, and then I want paragraph 
Well, let me push this below. Paragraph, and inside that paragraph, let's style it a little bit, and we'll say enter user ID. And I want also two paragraphs. Um, so inside these paragraphs, I want input field, and I want name equal to name, and also I want a submit, but with the name of login. And that's it, very simple. Let's go to red cookie HTML, let's have our boilerplate, and uh, in the title, we'll type cookies, then in the body, let's have um, cookie user ID is all set. So this is in the main body. And I will have a breaking line and I want a tag to go to the local host get cookie route. This is my goal to go to get cookie route in order to display this message just to prove that the cookies are set. Okay. So um, red cookie. Let's go to HTTP colon slash slash local hosts port 5000 and get cookie. Okay, and here we can say, for instance, click to read cookie. Okay, and that's all. So let's actually go ahead and run our file or run our server. Um, just let's exit the Flask 7 and enter Flask 8. I just I discovered that app I've created in the main um, in the master folder. I just um, just cut it and paste it inside the Flask 8 cookies folder. Okay, so let's run it again. All right, let's open the browser. And we have enter user ID message. Okay, notice that it's the main or the default route as we have specified here in the HTML file. And let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, for example. Enter, cookie user ID is all set. Okay, so what does that mean? If you will hit F12 or Control Shift C maybe um, in your default browser, and um, you want to go in application and go ahead to cookies in storage. So you have local storage, session storage, WebSQL, IndexedDB, and cookies. And click on that arrow and double click on um, the local host port 5000. You will find that it's stored in the form of key value pair. The key is the user ID and the value is your user, your actual user ID. So this is the name and this is um, the actual ID. All right. And you can clear that by just clear all. And uh, if you will click here, click to read cookie, we will have an error because we have deleted it. But uh, let me actually go to the main route. And let's say 090909, submit. Okay. And double click, and you find that. Um, we have a new cookie set. Click to read cookie. Welcome 0909. This is your cookie. Okay. All right. This is the end of the Flask crash course for 2021. I know I didn't cover a lot of topics in the Flask documentation, but as I told you, this course is not an in-depth course. It's a crash course that has a purpose of guiding you and just uh, showing you the way. Once again, thank you very much, guys, and I will see you in the next crash courses. Take care.